Hi everyone, uh, I'm Diana Lakatos, Director of Documentation at Platform OS. Uh, I will walk you through our developer portal and uh, talk about our content and content production, editorial workflow, and some technical details like continuous integration and delivery and automated tests. Uh, after this walkthrough, I will be happy to discuss other aspects that uh, you are interested in as well. Uh, I'd start with a brief introduction of our product, company, and community. Uh, platform OS is a model-based application development platform aimed at front-end developers and site builders. So the main target audience of our developer portal is developers, but of course, our site has to cater to other target audience segments as well. Uh, we have been a distributed, fully remote company from the start. Uh, we have team members all over the globe, for example, in the US, Australia, Poland, Hungary, Romania. Similarly, we have community members uh, all over the world too. Uh, everyone is working remotely all of the time. Uh, this distribution in space uh, also comes with the fact that groups of people uh, working together are in different time zones. Uh, so we had to consider this uh, when we developed processes and chose tools. This is our developer portal. It provides onboarding, conceptual information, tutorials, examples, API references, use cases, and best practices. Uh, following the docs as code approach, it is built for iterations and collaboration. Uh, our documentation is fully open source. You can find uh, all the code and content in our GitHub repository. Uh, it provides a concise and complete uh, documentation starter kit to newcomers. Uh, including conceptual information, step-by-step -step onboarding, and a fully working sample site. Step-by-step -step tutorials for uh, more experienced users are um, grouped by features and ordered by difficulty from beginner to advanced, and they cross-reference related subsections and topics. We add the examples, um, developer tips, uh, diagrams, um, everything that uh, makes it easier for uh, our developers to understand uh, the concepts and the uh, tutorials. Uh, we add um, uh, code samples with language specific code highlighting to ease comprehension. Uh, throughout the process of building our documentation site, uh, we followed uh, content first and um, design thinking approaches. And uh, we are continuously revalidating and improving our design and user experience through iterative approach uh, supported by user research. Uh, we built an editorial workflow that works for all participants, like internal or external writers, developers, contributors, and so on. And for all stages of the process, like writing, reviewing, and editing, we treat our docs like code. Each stage of our workflow is in Git, including project management. Now I would talk a bit about our content production. The first tool, uh, one that we started developing early on in the process of building our documentation site is our documentation style guide. Um, it includes the following information, uh, a detailed uh, description of our audience, um, because everyone um, who wants to write for our uh, developer portal has to understand who they are writing for. Uh, for grammar and syntax, we chose a well-known style guide that works for us. It's a US English style guide because our company headquarters are in the US. Uh, we added sections on tone and style. These are quite straightforward, like uh, using present tense, um, active voice, second person. Uh, but we found that um, even though these are uh, basics, uh, they really help when someone wants to write for us, but also uh, for the review process so that uh, the end product or the end result will be consistent with our style guide. Um, we also describe the format we use. Um, again, this is something that we have to make consistent by the time the content is published um, because we want to ensure that our content is well structured, uh, which also improves accessibility, both by helping users understand the flow of the topic and by providing a clear structure for screen readers and other assistive devices. Uh, we also de um, define the guidelines for uh, accessibility and inclusive language in our style guide. Uh, our documentation consists of different types of topics, like uh, tutorials, uh, concepts, and so on. Uh, and uh, for these, uh, we provide uh, templates, uh, which are pre-made um, uh, markdown templates to use. Um, each template includes all non-changeable content and placeholders with explanations for the parts to add. Uh, 
uh, placeholders provide information on the recommended format, like, for example, a title and any requirements or limitations, um, for example, like the maximum number of characters. Uh, for our templates, uh, we were inspired by topic-based authoring and data uh, in the sense that we decided to have three main content types for our documentation. Tutorials that describe how to accomplish a task, concepts that provide background information and context, and references like our API reference. Uh, we started with outlining the structure for these content types and creating the templates, but uh, as we developed and used our documentation, we also created templates for other content, like release notes or use cases. Our site uses liquid pages, uh, but we write documentation content in GitHub Flavor Markdown and use a Markdown converter to turn it into liquid. Uh, we went with Markdown because it's a versatile markup that provides semantic meaning for content while still being quite easy to read. Uh, most developers already know it from GitHub. Most writers and editors are familiar with it. And even if someone doesn't know it, uh, they can usually learn the basics pretty fast uh, or use a Markdown editor, especially when using our templates that are already in Markdown and include the whole structure. Semantic HTML is important for accessibility, and we make sure not to style text any other way than through Markdown, which is then translated into HTML. Uh, this way, screen readers can properly navigate through the content, and it also helps overall consistency when, for example, we want to do a design update. Our documentation is in a separate uh, repository on GitHub. We chose this approach because it's open source, and we think this works best for reviewers and contributors. We have a central branch, and we work locally in a dedicated branch. Then we send pull requests for review to be merged uh, into the main branch. Our documentation uh, site's code uh, is in the same uh, repository uh, as uh, the content. Uh, so it also serves as a best practice example for building a developer documentation site on platform OS. Uh, anyone can clone and reuse our documentation if they would like to use it as a starting point for their own docs. Uh, to preview, uh, we use our own staging site, which is an exact copy of the live uh, developer portal. Uh, we release updates continuously, which means that there are times when we merge multiple changes every day, and there are times when we merge changes once or twice a week. Uh, now let's go through the steps of our editorial workflow. Uh, when we get uh, internal or external feedback through Slack, the feedback block on our documentation, user research, team members, engineering, and so on, all of these requests are considered tasks, regardless of where they came from. The process starts with creating a ticket for a task. Uh, once the ticket is ready, it goes into the backlog of our internal sprint planning, where we discuss priorities and the selected tickets are added for the next sprint. Then uh, the author writes uh, content or makes changes to existing content. Um, the author can be any of our team members, but also any community member. The process is the same for everyone. Uh, when content is done, uh, the author sends a pull request to the documentation GitHub repository. A developer and a writer review the PR, they suggest and discuss changes, and once it's final, we approve and merge it. We work with continuous integration and deliveries. So once a PR has been merged, the new code uh, or content goes through automated testing and is deployed to our staging then to our production site. We handle the whole editorial workflow and project management in the same tool. Uh, we keep track of content needs and content production on the issues interface of our documentation repository on GitHub. Anyone can open an issue, and it can be any type of task, a bug that needs fixing, a topic request, or some feedback on existing topics or plans that we have shared. Uh, we work with continuous integration and delivery, which means that content is continuously tested, merged with each patch, and deployed, uh, which in this context means published. Uh, we store the files locally while editing, then we use our own command line tool uh, and GitHub actions to deploy the code base to our staging, then to our production instance. Uh, we run automated tests as part of our workflow. On uh, every code merge to our main branch, GitHub actions runs quality checks. There are, uh, these are the steps uh, in our uh, test process in order. Uh, first, the system tests build assets and our auto-generated GraphQL documentation. Uh, then it deploys the project to the staging environment uh, using our command line interface tool. 
uh, as the third step, it runs end-to-end -end tests using CodeSepJS. Uh, and as the fourth step, it runs uh, Google Lighthouse on the production environment to catch possible performance regressions. If everything went according to our standards, it deploys to production. Uh, so these are the foundations for our developer portal, but of course there's a lot more to discuss, so I'm very happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Hey. Hi, Dia. Hello. <laughs> it works. Awesome. Is Adam also able to join? So I'm uh, looking if uh, Adam Broadway, who is... Uh... Yes. Hi. Um, so we've never met, uh, but uh, you are the founder and CEO of Platform OS. Yes, that's correct. And Welcome. thanks for having us on, Laura. Welcome. And uh, Diana, as you said, uh, Director of Documentation, thank you for the, the demo. Who is the primary audience for this portal and what is the business value that it's creating for you? I'll, uh, I'll have a go at answering that one. Uh, the primary audience is typically application developers, front-end developers, web site builders, uh, anybody who's building a, uh, a solution for the web, uh, as whether it's a website or an application, which uh, may be API based. And so we try to cover the spectrum from the beginner right through to the advanced developer. And the approach is to ensure that somebody who is fresh, maybe they're coming from kicking the tires on WordPress and having some limited exposure on development, and wanting to go down the stack and develop real applications can come in and start fresh. And then for those who are already full stack developers who want to come in and maybe ignore the fact that they have to use DevOps because Platform OS is DevOps in a box as well, but they still need to have really complex problems solved and presented in a way that the documentation can you know, answer those critical questions. So very focused on the developer journey and uh, the that, that's the, our main our main audience, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what is the business value that you're getting out of running a developer portal? Well, I think the credibility of our documentation highlights to developers that we're serious about our platform. So the return on value and the business value we get from investing in high quality documentation is that the audience that we're wanting to get in front of really respects the effort that Diana has uh, put into creating and managing something that for them as developers, they will respect. Like our Google Lighthouse scores on both our main marketing site and our documentation is 100 out of 100 on all points. So if somebody goes to the site and reads the documentation and it's really great, but then they look at say Google Lighthouse and the performance is low, that's a contradiction to us. So the business value in providing high quality documentation and backing it up with the performance metrics that we get means that our audience wants to build on us. And we're seeing that with the enterprise clients and government agencies that have started building on us. Yeah. It's also kind of a cash 22, right? Like you have to prove it because this is what you do. Exactly right. 100%. How, when you were explaining the editorial, um, pathway idea. Uh, you were showing that one of the ways the ticket is created is from results from user research. Um, and can you talk more about that? And how did that go into designing the portal? That is a Diana answer. And it, she might have frozen, I think. Yeah, it might be that the connection is a bit broken. Okay, so the question, and I was listening on behalf of Diana, expecting mm -hmm. her to jump in. So uh, you might just want to repeat that one for me again so I can uh, answer it correctly. Um, yeah. It really is a more about the editorial pathway, but I have another mm -hmm. one. Uh, yeah, great. <laughs> so the design thinking approach that you were also mentioning, um, could you tell me a little bit more about that? Again, best answered by Diana, uh, but I think you know that that approach to really involve the community and have we have an ecosystem already in place with a lot of developers. Uh, and Diana's back now, so she'll jump in. But Diana, the question related to what was the purpose of the design thinking approach that we've taken and used, and also related to the user research, how how we went about that. Okay, so um, our goal with uh, user research is to understand user expectations, behaviors, needs, 
motivations, obstacles, uh, and we do use a research at all stages of the development process. And this also includes content development. Uh, we use different UX research methods depending on plans, time constraints, uh, the stage of the content or, or the feature we would like to explore and, and the current concerns uh, that users have. Uh, we started developing our uh, developer portal following the design thinking method. Um, from the very beginning, our goal was to build community-driven documentation. This means that we involve our community in all aspects of our documentation. And uh, engaging our users uh, early on in this agile and iterative process ensure that we can test and uh, validate all of our assumptions and quickly modify anything if needed. Uh, we involved our community in everything. Um, we always shared what we did as soon as we had something that we could discuss with them. Uh, that means sitemaps, layout plans, plans for content, navigation, basically everything. Uh, UX research has played a vital role uh, in this from the beginning because we could get uh, more structured uh, results that way uh, that were easier to use. Uh, we test everything so we can make sure that uh, we can change course and adjust to user needs quickly. Uh, we have been uh, doing user research uh, continuously uh, since the beginning. Uh, we use different methods like interviews, moderated and unmoderated uh, usability testing, card sorting, tree tests, surveys, questionnaires, analytics results. So basically anything that uh, we can use to get more feedback from our users. Uh, we collect the key information and then summarize the takeaways. Um, of course, each uh, research methodology has a different way to analyze and synthesize the results. Uh, but the goal is always to find patterns uh, that emerge across uh, different participants and also to have a better understanding of uh, related items and underlying reasons for the different behaviors. Um, and then uh, we also ensure that uh, these insights uh, we gathered are uh, used and acted upon. And we also share the results of these user research sessions with our community members. Mm -hmm. How do you test for accessibility? Um, with accessibility, uh, we always uh, consider two uh, pillars for it. Uh, one is the technical background and the other one is the language. So for um, uh, ensuring the technical background, the foundation, uh, we use uh, Figma's ABLE accessibility plugin uh, from the very beginning uh, of uh, our development workflow uh, and follow the rules for background color, foreground color, contrast, font sizes, graphical objects, and everything uh, uh, to make sure that uh, we only use uh, uh, semantic HTML, for example, which helps assistive technologies like screen readers. Uh, uh, we also regularly test for accessibility with, with various tools and ensure that the site complies with all accessibility requirements. Uh, these automated uh, checkers perform a series of audits on the site mm -hmm. and uh, then uh, provide the results uh, and recommendations. Uh, so we make sure to follow all these technical recommendations and fix any issues we find. Uh, as semantic HTML is essential for accessibility, we make sure uh, not to style text any other way than through Markdown, which is then translated into semantic HTML. Um, as I mentioned, we provide the uh, templates uh, to make it easier to contribute uh, in this way. Um, these technical aspects I mentioned are only uh, one part of the foundation. Uh, to have a truly accessible site, uh, you need to write for accessibility. Uh, we follow guidelines for structuring content and for using accessible and inclusive language. Um, and we have described uh, and explained these guidelines in our documentation style guide. Uh, we also have regular accessibility reviews, uh, which are then followed by a list of tasks that we do to improve accessibility on our developer portal. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much.